How much longer will Dave be a falcon? Seems like that bit's kind of worn out its welcome. That almost rhymes. Dandy Mouse! Stand in the remnants of the gas room, the stone shards of the cannonball in front of you. Above you, through the grate, you can see the night sky. And though your adventure so far inside the tomb has been hectic and dangerous, here, as the doorway yawns before you, you have a moment of relative peace to decide what you're going to do next. Snedrick, this might be an excellent opportunity for that tent of yours. I was going to say the same thing. Is this like a reusable hut or no? Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, yeah, okay. No, it's okay. a it's a spout. So it's a 10-foot radius immobile dome of force that springs into existence around and above you and remains stationary for the duration. The spell ends if you leave its area. Nine creatures of medium size or smaller can fit inside the dome with you. So good thing that Dave is a falcon. <laughs> <laughs> the spell fails if the area includes a larger creature or more than nine creatures, creatures and objects within the dome. When you cast the spell can move through it freely. All other creatures and objects are barred from passing through it. Spells and other magical effects can't extend to the dome, blah, 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 blah. Until the spell ends, you can command the interior to become dimly lit or dark. The dome is opaque from the outside, so it's of, of any color you choose, but it's transparent from the inside. So I'm going to go with a taupe. Ooh, Ooh, I like it. Okay. Taupe, sort of a traditional. Oh. So you crawl slash flap <laughs> into <laughs> into the tent and settle down for the evening. The sky passes overhead, and as the sun rises eight hours later, Dave, your now wing glows with a tiny little chain, and Carl the Pug of Pegacorn pops back into existence. And since he is no longer dead, your punishment is over and you transform back into a dragonborn. Oh, I don't think that's how that was supposed to work. Yeah. Oh, wow. You could have done that at any time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm honestly surprised you're allowing me to like talk and have stuff that I thought that was going to go on for. I couldn't do another you know, episode with you being seven like. Tenth. <laughs> No man, you're Chance a falcon. For a while. <laughs> I, I, no, I'm, you're a I'm fucking falcon. really, really certain that you will regret that decision. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I already regret that decision. It wasn't even mine. Only in the larger meta sense of regretting this entire endeavor. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> Not in the short term, certainly. All right, give yourselves a long rest. Long rest taken. Long rest. Yeah, baby. Spell slots reopen. Oh, look at all those spell slots. All right. So now that you are rested and your spell slots are back, your health is up to full. You're a dragon born again. <laughs> Carl, what's going on, buddy? That was a God great job. Damn it. Oh, I liked our little our little bird that we couldn't talk to us. I was watching the whole thing from hell. It was pretty funny. I liked when you almost bowled him under the pillars. That was a lot of fun for me. I just enjoyed the whole thing. I like you, Carl. I didn't enjoy when you used me as a potholder. I thought that was offensive. Oh, I'm sorry. Do you not like being used as an object to get around things? <laughs> no, I don't. It's I, I see what you're doing. I see what you're saying. I don't like it. I feel like your voice is turning into my voice right now. <laughs> You're like, your voice is turning into my voice. Your right voice now. is turning into my voice. Yours is turning into I, mine. I talked like this even before we this podcast started. These are different voices. These are very different voices. <laughs> I love John's pizza in the village. Crispy crust. <laughs> I came up with Tony D. All right. <laughs> oh, dear. All right. The door yawns before you. What do you do? I, well, and now that it's yawn, that's going to make me yawn. <laughs> yeah. so I'm gonna... Onward and upward. All right. What are we doing right now? I feel like I was a bird. I had no oh, idea what was happening for a while. God, I fucking can't with you. All this speech, just for me, just for once. Can you, can you say... You don't want me to talk right now? Can you say caw-caw? Caw-caw? Very nice. All right, let's move on. 
Cool. What are we doing right now? <laughs> getting a fucking harp. Let's go. This is going to blow your mind, but we're getting one, uh, one of the wand of seven parts this part. How many parts do we have right now? I think two. Three? Two or three. I mean, these are all possibilities that are numbers, you know, <laughs> from one to seven. Yeah, we have four. We have four parts. Wow. Because I have four powers with it. Who's have, holding them? Me. You have them in like a bag? No. No. I think they're on the wand. I don't think it wand. really matters where I have them. It's a, That's really my business and not yours. Oh, right. There was a whole butt <laughs> stuff part. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, so ass. Got it. We all decided that, that Snedrick should have them. Okay. I don't think we did. I think they were just given to him. <laughs> <laughs> because he's not trying to start fights and fucking steal the fucking noses off of people. Yeah, I, I I will make that wand sentient if you attempt to give it to Dave, and it will ask to go back to Stanton. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, it's me, the wand. Fuck no. <laughs> do you know the shit that wand can do? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So unlike the other chambers you've encountered so far, the walls of this next room are perfectly smooth and perfectly round. As the last of you slips into the room, the door once again vanishes behind you. But the only thing in this room is a plinth on which stands a dark red gem. And once you're all inside the room, it flashes with a brilliant red light. Everybody make a wisdom saving throw for me. Oh, boy. Mm. 14. 13. 7. 12. Wow. This does not look good for me. Okay. Snedrick, you sort of clear your, you rub your eyes the way one does after a particularly bright like camera flash. And you notice that everyone in the room is now circling the room, mumbling something intently to themselves. Everyone else, you are not in control of your characters. There is nothing you can do. Oh, wow. Wow. It's like being a falcon all over again. <laughs> I do it faster and with more ease than <laughs> with keen sight. <laughs> All right, are y'all just fucking with me because I don't have snug spain or is this really happening? Caw. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. So I'll give you this. As one of them passes by you, you could take your pick. You hear them mumbling to themselves, find the corner, find the corner. I see. Oh, wow. What's the shape of the room? He said it's an entire sphere. Yeah, it's perfectly smooth and perfectly round. All right, I'm going to do some kind of investigation of some sort. Sure. Whichever one has the highest number for me. Do it. Arcana, maybe? Sure. Because you probably have really high intelligence, right? Yeah. 13. 13. With a 13, it's obvious that this gem has done some kind of mind control magic on the rest of the party. <laughs> well, that's useful. So that's helpful. Helpful. <laughs> that's I could have just useful. been doing this. You don't know. <laughs> Yeah. That's true. That's true. No, I, at least I know you guys aren't <laughs> fucking with me now. Yeah. All right. Find the corner. Uh, I'm going to look around and see if there's a person. Oh, I'm going to see if there's anybody who's dressing a corpse. Ooh. All right. Make a investigation check for me. Coroner. Classic. <laughs> all right. Uh, I'd be a 13 or 12. A 12. There is not a coroner dressing up a corpse, but I will tell you that the walls are made out of stone. Mm, I see. Roll for finding the corner. Yeah, right, right, exactly. <laughs> so, okay, I and, and and we're in a spherical room a la Cerebrum? Sure, yeah. All right. You could maybe try, like, waking one of us up or something. I, I'm going to smack really close to, to Claw's ears. <laughs> I was getting hit in the face for sure. In my head. <laughs> Claw, make a wisdom saving throw for me. Oh, three. Nope. He just goes, <laughs> doesn't even notice you. Just goes back, find the corner, find the corner, find yep, the corner. Like continues me. to walk in a circle. All right. So oh, they're walking in circles too. Okay. I'm going to clap next to a wiser team member. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. I'm pretty wise. I'm I'm plus four. I'm plus three. I'll, I'll go with Bridget anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Smart move. All right. Wisdom saving throw? I'm sulking, by the way, as I walk in a circle right now. <laughs> no, you have no control. You can't sulk. Find the corner. Find the corner. <laughs> 17. Mm -mm. God. Nope. Corner. Stay. Oh, you continue to circle shit. the room. What? Oh, 17 wasn't good enough. All right. 21. 
<laughs> Tw- I'm going to smack next to Dave and back in time. You <laughs> continue to circle the room. <gasps> what? Yeah. All right. Okay, so we now got to get nat 20s to wake up. Or just something else. All right, so I am going to pack a bowl of snog Spain. Sure. <laughs> Never failed you. Painting this picture of you them all just walking <laughs> around you in circles. <laughs> yeah, I feel like maybe if I get them high enough to sleep it off, I feel like I should create the goddamn tent again, you know. Just, <laughs> I get another nap in while I'm here. Do you have, like, shaped stone or something? Mm-mm. Did anything, has anything happened to the gem? Like, is the gem just in the middle still? No, nope, just sitting there on the plinth. Does the plinth have corners? The plinth does not have corners. It's also perfectly round. Does the gem have facets that have cornery spots? Yes, it does. Oh. All right. I will examine the corners of the gem. Do you touch the gem when you examine it? Or Maybe do you, just, you don't yet. Or <laughs> no. do you just get real, real close? I'm just going to get real, real close, obviously, is what I would do if whether or not you had asked me that. He's not Dave. <laughs> I'll call this a separate investigation check. Make an investigation check on that gem for me. Yeah, the last one I was looking for a coroner. This is a totally different thing, obviously. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, 20 fucking five. Yeah. (laughs) Investigated the shit out of that. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Took fingerprints and everything. (laughs) SBU'd it. (laughs) So with that, you can actually see that the remnant, this is a fractal gem, right? It's magic, so that makes the words I just said make sense. (laughs) Okay, that doesn't... What? It's a fractal gem that contained a spell inside of it. Now the spell is actually distributed outside. The gem is worthless. Like, it it doesn't contain any magic. It's not controlling them anymore. The spell is now actually inside your companions, so the gem won't be any help to you. All right, well, I think I'm going to hold on to it because a worthless gem is probably going to be useful in, like, convincing Claw to do something from a distance at some point. Sure, yeah. I I like it. I like it. He doesn't know what's going on right now. Nope. All right, so I got to find the corners of them. I'm going to examine Dave and see if he has a corner. Ow, ow, what are you doing? (laughs) Why would the corner be right there? Right there? (laughs) I had to start somewhere. I went alphabetically. There. You're tall, he's short. Yeah. I would have done the same. I can only reach something, (laughs) man. Give me an investigation check, and we'll just call it for examining all of your party members. Okay. Okay, 13. With a 13, I'll give you this. They are not looking for a corner on themselves. They are looking for a corner in the room. But it's a spherical room. Right. But it's made of stones that are not spherical, I'm guessing. You said smooth stone. Yeah, the stone has been smoothed. Yeah. But like, yeah, so there there would be like probably joints where the mm-hmm. thing met. But if you had like, a, you know, a stone that had rounded corners and edges, you could still, you know, most people would be like, oh, there's a corner of it. Yeah, that's that's not what you're looking at here. What you're looking at here is look, <laughs> okay. like, you, don't stop saying what you're saying. It's dumb. <laughs> it's not helpful. OK, <laughs> not you. I'm. I'm saying that's you're saying that to me. Go ahead. Oh, OK. I was, I was like, I was like, I'm actually the entire universe of the game. So everything I say is <laughs> no, useful. I was fully acknowledging that fact. <laughs> Stop talking, Eli. Eli, we'll- shut up and let me figure out this dungeon. <laughs> Eli, do you mind leaving the room? We're going to figure this dungeon out. <laughs> you're not helping. All right. Could you leave the universe, please? Uh, I'm just searching through my inventory. And I assume that you might have one similar to mine. I have a tinder box, which is bound to have a corner in it. Yeah. Oh, this is good. I like this. I'm checking my inventory. All right. I have a spell book. Oh, spell books have corners. Yeah, that would definitely. You could open it to create a corner and stand it up on end. Yeah, there you go. I'm going to open it and stand it on end and be like, there's your fucking corner right there. You pull out the book and the moment the shape of your spell book comes out of your bag, all the eyes in the room are drawn to it and they sort of scurry towards it and you watch them pawing at it for a moment and the spell is over and a door is open in front of you. Okay, we just needed to see what the some fuck right angles just happened. represented by physical <laughs> well, reality a little hey. bit. <laughs> hey, is that a gem? Can I have it? <laughs> no, no, it's, it's put away. I put it away. It's been put away. <laughs> Shake it up in the air and then throw it into the room we were just in before. <laughs> See what he does. 
What if none of us pass that initial check? <laughs> <laughs> Game's over, man. <laughs> yes. All right. Just, the whole show ends right there. We roll up some new characters. There have maybe. to be stakes, you know. <laughs> wow. Quigley. Quigley. Is Quigley, Quigley still Patrick, yeah. Yeah, no, he was rolling around in the room, too. Oh, fun. Rolling? Awesome. Cool. <laughs> all right. Well. Yeah, it seems weird that they could all walked in circles in that sphere. Now that I think about it. <laughs> We're just like... Slowly bumping up against the side and not right, right. Ready. Everybody <laughs> shoulder to shoulder, <laughs> trying to go up the side and falling every time. It was kind of a low impact gem spell just now. I don't feel like anything really happened. Quigley, what do we do now, in your opinion? Um, I guess we keep going, right? All right. Well, did you remember that room from when you were in the servants' quarters? Okay. Uh, I just want to clarify because you guys have asked me this a couple of times. None of these deadly traps were in the castle that I lived in and worked in before. Ah, oh, right. I remember. Never mind. The castle was completely deadly trap free up until the spell. Cool. I don't know. Completely. How would you know about? Well, you know what? Never mind. I'll take your word for it. I'll take your what word. was the um? What was the spherical room when it was just the castle? When you were in it? <laughs> <laughs> this was the marbles room. The marble room. <laughs> yeah. For the marble. When we played marbles. You would just play? Yeah. Like everyone would. Seems like a bad shape for a room to play marbles in. Win. Yeah. I think it would be kind of fun, actually. A little bit like a bull pit. Thank you, Bridget. They'd all just collect at the bottom. Or you can like throw them up against the wall, see how far they can get. Yeah. We played that one. See if you could do one one circuit yeah. of the entire thing. Mm -hmm. Quickly, did you do that a lot? You had fun with that? Tons. Loved it. Cool. Marbles are the shit. All right, is there any other weirdly <laughs> shaped rooms that we're going to have to come across on? Uh, again, he doesn't remember. So why don't we why don't we continue on? That is some very very strong snogs bane because man, I feel like I just took another long rest. It's wild. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you go into the next room like the last room. The stone in this room has been worn smooth. As the door behind you vanishes, you notice that written on the other side of the room in golden letters is the elven phrase, Amelius Bedelius, which translates to, be careful what you wish for. Or Amelia Bedelia. All right, nobody think about a marshmallow man. Does anybody know what <laughs> Amelia Bedelia was about? I know that name is like I a children's know, book or yes, so, a young yeah, adult yes, book. I mean, fantasy, fantasy, the war, the witch, warlock, uh, Amelia Bedelia was... Everything she said came true. Oh, she was like, but in a bad way. She was like a monkey's paw scenario. Well, well, she would she would take what you said literally without without bringing in context. Oh, so okay. I see Dave's a falcon. <laughs> <laughs> so if you told her to take out the laundry, she wouldn't put it up. She'd just take it outside, throw it out, or like murder it. <laughs> oh, I, I, oh, that, that too. Date it. Dave a falcon? Dave should be a falcon. If we all say it. Okay, wh <laughs> what what said Amelius Bedelius on it just now? What were we just now? What are we looking at, everybody? The wall on the other side of the room said, be careful what you wish for. Be careful Ooh. what you wish for. So is nothing else is in the room? Nothing. All right, yeah, I feel like one of us should just wish that we're past this um, riddle or whatever. That feels like it might backfire. But that could mean like... A hundred of years in that's, the future and we're dead, that's maybe? That's going to backfire. There's so many ways. <laughs> we, have to, we have to pick our language so carefully for the so rest of this. So carefully. <laughs> I really, I want us all to be very quiet right now. <laughs> okay, silent podcast for the rest of the time. <laughs> <laughs> I just want us all to be very quiet right now. I feel like the door to the next room is open is a, is, is pretty, is pretty hard to... Mm -hmm. Maybe we, yeah, maybe we just go past the danger wishing room and go to the next one. Is there a door? Do we already? No, is there it's the room door? is the okay. door behind you is fan. No, there there is no door. There is no door. I have a feeling that we are supposed to W I S H it open. Right. Yeah. You feel like the wishing spell can't spell? I <laughs> feel, I feel like God is being very fucking quiet right now, waiting for us just to say 
one phrase. Also, some of us try not to trigger a toddler's hunger and or rage on a given <laughs> at a given <laughs> moment. So spelling is a very important vestige for some of us. Yep. Yeah, no, it, it happens. I wish Claw was a falcon. <laughs> oh. Do you actually say that, Heath? Or is that just a funny <laughs> joke for our podcast? <laughs> oh, Heath. I will play Do along with whatever that? happens. <laughs> I actually said that. Oh. I wish Dave was a falcon. And <laughs> Claw and Dave are both falcons. I... <laughs> Snedrick. Snedrick, I thought you were at least on my no, side. No, because if I didn't do that, you and my, you're in my ass would be falcons in a heartbeat. This was preventative. Oh. Does this mean... You know Claw, 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 everybody's a falcon, Claw. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God the you room doesn't speak falcon. <laughs> You know what, Snedrick? That's that was really, really smart of you. Actually, you. I didn't think of that. <laughs> I didn't. I mean, you could have said was silent. Does this mean that Dave and I can now talk? Yeah, that does mean we can talk. I understand you right now, so that's that's locked in. I love this. That's true. <laughs> <Great>. <laughs> You guys can start a parallel podcast. <laughs> yeah, right. No, Claw's just like, yeah, that was, this was a lot of this is a lot of work any fucking way. I kind of rather just be Claw, able to fly Claw. around. Kneel down behind Snedrick. Kneel down. <laughs> Kneel down behind Snedrick. <laughs> Ow. Okay, that didn't work. I'm a falcon. I didn't think. I thought I'd be able to push him. I have a feeling that the gem in the last room, Snedrick took it, so I'm going to try and steal the gem. No one else can hear us. <laughs> Tight. Okay. Classic. Make a sleight of hand check. <laughs> For a falcon. A yeah. falcon yeah. sleight. A... He has no hands. Yeah. It's a sleight of talon. I've got to look up Falcon 5e. <laughs> falcon dexterity. <laughs> yeah. I think I think you're just supposed to roll a um a D twenty for that though. Yeah. Okay. Twenty-four. Critical twenty-four. Plus four. <laughs> All right. Yeah, but it's but it's not this you don't have the same same plus four. Yeah, you got, I'm not you a polymorph. Got 20. Jesus I'm Christ. not a polymorph in this necessarily, oh right? That's God. not the thing that has happened. I mean, a wish spell happens, so I think you are technically polymorphed, but okay. the the dexterity of a falcon is a plus three, so that's a 23. And a nat 20. And a nat 20. So <laughs> yeah, no. A nat 20 was just going to well, succeed. Well, darn it, he got my valueless <laughs> gem. Yeah, Snedrick, <laughs> right. you don't know how, but now one of the falcons is holding a gem. <laughs> I perch next to the other falcon and kind of nudge him and wink. <laughs> tight. Tight, tight, Me tight. Too. What else do you want to try and get off of him? Because we're really fast. Snedrick, <laughs> should we just leave them here? If they leave us here, we could follow them. We're faster. Yeah. I mean, we could we could wish that. <laughs> I I don't wanna I don't wanna waste my wish. Yep. Yep. <sighs> All right. I feel like you know, I, all right, so let me ask you. We're, we're both pretty clever here. Mm -hmm. If the wish, which it's not, but if it was, was that the door to the next room was open, what way can you imagine that going wrong? It could be a really bad room. I mean, it's going to be a bad room no matter what, though. I know, but what if we said something like the room that has the... Harp, what's the fucking thing? Oh, yeah, right, right. We could just wish that was in the next room. Yeah. Or or that we had, we could go to that room. Or that it was right here and there was also a door leading now. Claw. Or, or. <laughs> Steal his How snugs. about this? Steal his snog Spain. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. <laughs> Does everybody get one wish? Is that kind of the deal? Or is it just anybody gets as many wishes as they want? We don't know. You don't know. You're, You're a, a falcon. falcon. No, no, no. I'm talking to Eli. I'm talking to Eli. I'm talking to Eli. Yeah, you definitely get one wish because the room doesn't speak falcon. I wish really hard that I'm not a falcon. No, you already wished. I haven't wished yet. I wish that the All of two us are of not them... falcons. No, no, no. <laughs> Absolutely not. That would be not as funny. I wish that they could understand Falcon. <laughs> that Snedrick and Bridget can understand wish Falcon. Wish for more wishes, asshole. <laughs> no, you know what? Now they can understand Falcon. Wishes come true. Great. Yeah. <laughs> uh... Bridget, wish for more wishes, obviously. Nah, because that could just mean that we're going to like be in infinite numbers of this room. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think that we... Uh, that wish we for a time to... machine, something huge. I know how terrifying Amelia Bedelia, the great wizard, was. So, <laughs> excuse me.
excuse me. Right, but we also have to weigh that against how clever God is. She made an armchair. She did. (laughs) She made an armchair. I don't understand what that means. What was her big, like, you know, her her most famous adventure and she did something cool? Well, she would always mess everything up totally innocently. I'm guessing then there'd be like a wacky ending that, that helped out. But she would always mess everything up, but everybody would love her because she did bake very good treats. I have an idea. Mm-hmm. How many more wishes do we have? We have one. Or infinity, depending on what happens next. (laughs) Oh, my God. I would say one. Wish for us to go back in time to when we start having all the wishes, at least. What if if I said something like, for everyone uh, to know how to get everyone to the next part of this podcast? <laughs> what, if, what if you wish for Eli to read all the notes on the sheet in front of him? Yeah, but I mean, that may give you the knowledge, but not the means, right? You may know how to do it, but we'd be unable to do it without a wish. What would be the advantage of that over wishing that that had already happened? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's all about time travel. <laughs> because what, if I said safely at the end, then there might be a million ways of phrasing the term to get into the next room. But all of them might backfire. Say, and it doesn't backfire at the end of your wish. <laughs> no, and I said safely at the end, so, you know. Wish for more wishes. What's the worst that happens? That I was going to say, that literally precludes all actions, ultimately. Yeah. Right, the fact that, like, something could go wrong, but we can't think of anything that it could be. Right. right. right? There's, there's literally nothing one could suggest that that wouldn't be applicable to. Right. You could do the reset, the room reset. That's not a bad idea either. More wishes couldn't hurt. What what if I said to be in the room with the wand of seven parts piece? What if you wish for the entire wand, all the rest of it? I I thought about that, but I don't I don't think that's good podcasting. <laughs> <laughs> well, and also like the other parts may be in some sort of they may bring some sort of danger with them. Yeah, that'll backfire for sure. I, yeah, that, that would definitely backfire. I just um, dump all my bosses for the rest of the podcast <laughs> into this room. You guys have to fight eleven dragons I, at once. <laughs> I I could do this by literally taking my phone out and listening back to the podcast, but God, I don't want to do that. So, <laughs> what is the name of the part that we are? What part of the wand that we're looking for? The heart string. The heart string. Hearth? Heart, like tugging on the heart strings. Cool, cool, cool. Okay. Whew. What if I say that we, blank, that we were. This isn't it. This is a what if. We're, you're just, you're just uh, shooting the shit with us right now, not making a wish, right? Just talking. God, I wish I wish I couldn't understand that fucking bird anymore. <laughs> and boom, you can't understand the bird anymore. Oh, shit! <laughs> <laughs> is that all our wishes? <laughs> Guys, Bridget doesn't understand what I'm saying shit, right now. Shit, no matter shit, what shit, I say, shit, shit, shit. <laughs> that's do, do we do do we only have one? Because it doesn't say that we we only have one now. I could have gotten something. No, no, because we've all used a wish. If we only have one, no, each, you haven't was, used a wish. Claw didn't Snedrick. wish yet. No, yes, I did. No, I wish. Claw wished that we could understand Falcon. I wish that you guys were, or that you were a Falcon. You wish that he was a Falcon, oh, and she fuck. unwished Morgan. Uh, Quigley, well, Quigley has a wish. Wait, 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 wait. I want to be very clear. She only wished that she couldn't understand Dave, right? She can still understand me. I can yes. understand. She said understand. that Falcon. So that's right. And and for the rest of time, she can understand all other Falcons. <laughs> like we, her and that's I both in. speak Falcon, yep. except when Dave is a Falcon. <laughs> <laughs> so Quigley needs to make a wish. I'd also like to summon Carl the Pug of Peggorn to make a wish. I would love to just back off and just do that. It's like, hey, quickly, it's up to you now. And then yeah. we just both kick back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm kind of curious what happens with that, actually. Uh, okay. Quigley? Yeah, I can play Dungeons and Dragons with myself. Cool. <laughs> I got it. I got it. I could do it. Oh, God. I wish that the door to the next room would open. Oh, my God. No. Nope. This seems low impact. <laughs> In exactly the size shape and context that I am picturing. That doesn't, that wasn't even remotely what we asked you to do. <laughs> you guys, were well, do, you did a weird thing. You did a weird thing. You were like, you safe did a and weird you wanted thing. to be this out of the so room. so dumb just I, now. You did a thing. 
But as he's making those excuses, a wooden door appears in front of you and clicks open to the next room. Let's get out of this room. What's the What's the shape of the wooden door? I'm just curious what Quigley was thinking about. I just want to point out that the thing that I said we should do first is the thing that ended up working. I just want to <laughs> yeah. point out that I wish that Quigley didn't have an attitude problem, but that's just me. <laughs> Quigley, thank you. You've been an extreme help. You guys are the ones that turned into Falcons, not me. <laughs> I can't believe I fucking wasted my <laughs> one wish. I was being so careful up until then. It was. A, a lot it, of was it was. It was good goofs. That was pretty fucking... That's, fucking That's what people wanted. I don't know why I'm talking like Quigley right now. All right. <laughs> Quigley, tell us what, what this room looks like. You push through the... <laughs> Quigley's the dungeon master and I'm in your party all of a sudden. <laughs> you push through the wooden door and for just a moment, you feel like you've stepped into another world. After the stone and the metal and the spikes and the horrific monsters of the rest of this place, this room is resplendent in fine silks, comfortable chairs, and you could almost rest here. That is, you feel that way until you see the bodies. Three women, one older and two younger, slightly over teenage, frozen in death in their chairs. They're not skeletons or statues. Rather, they appear almost mummified. And even in their current state, you can tell that they possessed majestic finery and beauty when they were alive. Now, Quigley, who walked out the door first, freezes at the sight of them, stares at them in dull shock, and finally mumbles back to you, I didn't, I didn't think they'd be here, the, the queen and princesses. I assumed, well, I thought they wouldn't be here. I'm so sorry, Quigley. Quigley, did you kill them? Yeah, man, I did. Claw, claw, oh. <laughs> claws. A, a, luckily, claws a falcon, and, uh, and Quigley <laughs> doesn't speak falcon. Oh, uh, both Claw and Dave are no longer falcons when they pass through the. No, we oh. wish that doorway. Oh. <laughs> the room's power <laughs> faded as you walked out of it. Oh, the worst. <laughs> I wish Snedrick was a falcon. <laughs> Nothing happens. I step back into the Falcon room and try that. I've apparently thought about the paradox of Amelia Bedelia so much more than Eli has. <laughs> Bridget has anxiety. I get it. Well, no, it's so like the, the thing we have to keep in mind is that we're always going to be like, like the possibilities are limited to what Eli can come up with. Right. So as long we don't, we, we don't have to be as smart as possible. We just have to be smarter than God. Angelo, mm -hmm. I know that. Eli's stupid, so it can't be that complicated. Should be a square on the D and D minus bingo card. <laughs> but I'm asking, as a Christian, that you not put it on there. <laughs> you step into a Sudoku room, but it's a medium. <laughs> Aw, thanks, buddy. Have an inspiration point for saying I could do a medium Sudoku. <laughs> Sure could. Are these notes? Are these auto-filled notes on the inside of this? <laughs> You're literally just looking for the number four. This is not a Sudoku. <laughs> <laughs> so Quigley turns to you all and he says, we should go. The inner sanctum is behind that tapestry. We can find the prince and destroy the heartstring or whatever it is we need to do and be out of here. But as he hurries towards the door, a soft voice interrupts him. I'm afraid not, my darling. Unfortunately, my daughters and I were the first to die when my son cast his spell, and now we are the last to guard him. And you follow the voice to the three corpses, which have now risen from their thrones and begin to slowly pass in front of the tapestry to the final room. I cast Turn on Dead. <laughs> <laughs> no. Damn it. I, I'm in the middle of describing. You can cast it when I'm Sorry, done describing. Okay. <laughs> no. Because <laughs> then it just becomes interrupt Eli, the That's board fair. game. That's fair. <laughs> I punch her. I punch her right in the dick. <laughs> Nothing would be more our podcast, though, than the penultimate villain being, oh, right in the gooch. I fucking hate you guys. You're the fucking worst. Oh, right in the goocher. So she spins her hands and tremendous magical power radiates off her as she floats up into the air. And she says to you, my daughters were trained to be rulers and warriors, and I was the wife and partner of the wizard king. 
I am perhaps not as powerful as my son or his father, but I am more than enough to stop you. Everybody, roll initiative for me. Baller. everybody just jumping in real quick to thank you once again for listening to the podcast i hope you're enjoying it this was a fun and wacky section of the adventure to do and i'm glad that uh, some of y'all seem to be digging it hey if you're enjoying the show why not hop on to your podcast player and give us one of those five star reviews i've heard so much about really helps build up the show i don't know if Y'all saw, but recently we were listed as the number 16 new podcast on the fancy list of podcasts. Um, But it happened because of iTunes reviews like yours. So I'm very, very grateful that so many have done that. And if you haven't done it yet, just take 10, 20 seconds and do it right now. And hey, if you're loving the show, why not support us over on Patreon? Over at patreon.com forward slash D and D minus, all spelled out. You get access to our mini game that we played, as well as a few Dungeon Master's Corners. And you get to skip this middle part where I say the same thing over and over once a month, and you can get rid of that. Also, you get episode chunks with more money. I've taken the whole arcs of the series, and I've put them into one long track, so you don't have to worry about touching your iTunes player or whatever you got going on in your car. You just set it forget it and then you get to listen to the whole adventure all in a row which is really nice and again you can get all that for just a couple of bucks a month over at patreon.com forward slash d and d minus all right i'll let you get back to the show 20 10 16 i rolled a 20 Woo! just now Right now at 8.59 p.m. on the 12th of October. <laughs> oh, you're far. such an long, Longitude and latitude. 10, <laughs> 20, 20. And what'd you roll, Snedrick? 16. 16. The damn shit we didn't have rolls like this, like when we were doing damage or something where it would really matter. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, I don't know. Getting the jump on these ladies is probably a really good thing. Yeah, no, that's true. Is there three of them or is it just the queen? Three. There's the queen and the two princesses. I thought the princesses didn't move. Are these liches? You're going to have to find out. I mean, I'm going to call them filthy liches one way or the other. (laughs) I'm just telling you. The order is, and I will try not to forget this, but the order is Bridget, Dave, princess number one, Snedrick, Claw, the queen, princess number two, and Quigley. (laughs) Oh, Quigley. All right. Bridget, you are up first. All right, I would like to rip my shirt open and expose my back tattoo of Valkyr's holy symbol and turn them dead. (laughs) Fantastic. These are obviously significantly more powerful creatures, but we'll see if this turns them for a turn. What do they need to roll? Oh, they need to roll 14. All right, so they are all turned. Every single one of them. Excellent. Did we win? So you're, yeah, no. they, they, they <laughs> explode. And as, oh, God, it's the skeleton room all over again. Oh, no, guys. Guys, I need 20 minutes to write an ending to this arc. I'm so. I, I don't think we're that lucky. Oh, beans. No. It's gone so wrong. They hiss as Valkyr's laughter echoes around the room, and you see them sort of back away in terror from Valkyr's holy power. Uh, Dave, you are up next. Don't they take any damage? No, they're too powerful for that. They're too powerful for that. Okay, cool. They're like powerful, like spirity things. They look like mummies. They're dead ladies. They're undead. But they are corporeal, if that's what you're getting at, Dave. They're corporeal? Yes, they are corporeal. Are you sure? Positive. I made them up. (laughs) (laughs) He's God. How much matter do they have? Oh, 100%. (laughs) Damn it. That, I didn't really trick you with that question at all. <laughs> Fine. Fine. Moving on. All right. I'm going to start with just some passive perception. <laughs> Your passive perception has told you everything you need to know about this experience. I'd like to st- now move to passive investigation. <laughs> sure. Yep. You've got it. And insight. 
Yep. All you have, you know everything you need to know without using a turn. I wish he was a falcon. <laughs> <laughs> you just hear a caw from the room behind you. Don't think too hard about it. <laughs> do I have to use an action to do a check? Yes. Okay. I feel like attacking is the way to go. Yeah, I mean, just I'm start just, blasting, just man. Just, just, just an idea. You're a fucking You've been warlock a falcon and you too get long. Your, I get you it. You have but... your spells now. <laughs> You have your spells. <laughs> Just go wild. I've got, okay, I have a plan. Oh, no. This character <laughs> arc, <laughs> this character arc of like, I've been a falcon and now I want to be a falcon again and not do actions is so beautiful. It's pretty excellent. I like it. All right. Okay. I just want to note that in my inventory is a cuddly stuffed dragon. <sighs> Would you say we're in danger right now? Oh, yeah. You're yeah. in super serious mm -hmm. danger. Yeah. Okay, so it transforms into a real dragon. You've pet it once, dude. What? You pet that dragon once. Yeah, super nicely. I, I used the word nicely. Ugh. You think you're going to get a full-on transformation for one pet? Yeah. Do you know how nicely I pet? I pet you all the time, and it's delightful. <laughs> yeah, multiple pets. You've said that. Pet me once. Pet me once. We're strangers. Yeah, you loved that first one. Not enough to transform into a dragon, I'll tell you that. I pet the dragon. <laughs> you can use your action to pet this Is dragon. Is that your fucking turn? You're going to use your action to pet your dragon? God damn it. I wish he was a fucking falcon. <laughs> <laughs> you hear another call from behind you again. Real, <laughs> don't, it gets Black Mirror episode -y if you go back there. So yeah. just don't think about it. There's just, there are calls. Okay. Sliding doors. Anyway. All right. All right. I don't want to wait. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was the song from Sliding Doors. Dawson's Creek? Know. Yeah. Only it sounds ca 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 Okay. So uh, what would everybody prefer? I do an attacky thing or I can kind of disable the most powerful one of these three super dangerous things. It's up to you. What did Bridget do? Hurts. Hurt it. Hurt the thing. Did you hurt it? She turned them. So I turned them so they have to use their actions to dash away from us instead of kill us with magic. Yeah. Okay. So then I feel like, yeah, I feel like we, we all like sound off on one of them. We all go after princess number one or whatever. Uh, the queen. The queen. Fine. I'm going to do the normal strategy. If we were playing a game of Dungeons and Dragons, everybody, I would use my Eldritch Blast, which is what I'm going to do. Perfect. Because right. that's what we're. That's what we're doing. doing. I don't know why you had to get so fucking meta about it. <laughs> if we were on Earth, what I'd do... <laughs> well, now it's meta. I was just saying a regular first level thing that if we were... In, it's, it's fine. Eldritch Blast, the powerful one. Not even busting out a spell slot. All right. Look how helpful he is. Our fucking... Roll that dice for me. 20, natty. Ooh. 27. Ooh, 27. Yeah, that'll hit. And you roll twice the dice. So that means you are going to roll 2d10 plus 4. So that's 5 and a 1 plus 4. That's 10 damage. All right. Hey, hey, Dave, you can stop rolling. Why is it so bad? I keep treating and it's not helping. <laughs> that's not that bad on a, on a d10. I mean, on a d10, 5 is pretty average. It's <laughs> below average by a little bit. <laughs> so the first princess is up. She has a long sword, but she is still frightened by Valkyr's magic. So she turns from you and runs towards the back of the room. Snedric, you are up. All right. Before you decide, I believe that undead are probably weak to fire, right? Do we want to try the grease grenade agonizer scorcher idea we had before here? Super duper, yes. If the grease grenade will like cover them in grease. And then if you blast them with fire, it should, I would imagine it would like give them prolonged burning damage. Mm -hmm. mm. Cool. Well, I'll tell you what. Well, I, I'm, yeah, I'm you're all going for it. That'll me, be yeah. The, yeah, that'll be the next turn. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I'm all about that. From a narrative perspective, that makes sense <laughs> that we would use our powerful stuff at this moment. So I have the Thunder Wave as like my most powerful dealio mm -hmm. on the Wand of Seven Parts. It says a wave of thunderous force sweeps out from me. Each creature within a 15 foot cube originating from me must make a constitution saving throw on a failed save. At this point with the level I'm casting at, it would be 5d8 damage if they missed a thing. So am I able to in one action or in one move, like, you know, whatever 
fucking action dive roll my way to the corner of the room where uh, that 15 foot cube would encompass one or more bad guys, but not my party. Oh, yeah, you could definitely do and that. And you're going to use all four charges in the wand to do the 5d8? Are there four charges in the wand? Yeah, there are four charges in the wand and various strength spells take up various charges. Oh, yeah, 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 I got you. Honestly, I would say go ahead and do it. Yeah, so you can catch two of them. You can catch the queen and princess number two. Okay, I'm going to do that. I have to make a constitution saving throw. And if not, I'm going to fuck them right up. Okay, so Snedrick, here's what happens. You run forward with the wand of seven parts and the queen steps forward sort of to meet you as you're doing it. She waves her hand and as this amazing blast of thunder erupts out of the tip of your wand, you see that as she waves her hand, it sort of dispels sideways. Even though she's turned away and, and, and running? So she took damage, which means she's no longer turned away. Oh, I see. When you take damage, you face it? Uh, when you take damage, you're no longer turned. Yeah. That makes sense, yeah. If so, something smacks you in the back of the head, you're going right. to turn that way generally. Yeah, exactly. So that makes sense. Okay. So you blast this spell out at her. She waves her hand, and it sort of splits to either side of her, and then you watch the magic sort of like drain away and stop. I have an alternate dimension I can make with a rope. I'm going to climb up there and sulk. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have any sort of like spell blast or like anything blue stuff? Blue, blue you stuff? You know all the spells you have. He's got a bunch of stuff. It was just we like dropped the nuke and it was like nothing happened. Yeah. All right, Claw, you are up next. While you're sulking, do you want to try the grease grenade thing next? I mean, sure. Like, it's, she's probably just going to like flip it out like all <laughs> oh, my, oh, my other stuff. There's a spell called anti grease. <laughs> <laughs> it's called water. She has a Mr. Clean magic eraser. <laughs> is the grease is the grease grenade infinite? Like, I, this is a one use only thing. You have five grease grenades. Okay. I'm going to toss... Use all of them. <laughs> I'm going to toss a grease grenade at the princess. They're all pretty close to each other, right? Well, no. One's on the back wall, but I'm wondering if I should pull any of them out of their confusion or just go after the queen. I so. feel like you go with the queen. I feel like go we, with the we, queen. we've already okay. taken a dent out of her. Yeah. Okay. Keep going with the queen. Okay. I'm going to toss the grease grenade on the queen. All right. So again, the description on that, a fist-sized glass ball that spills one D20 plus five feet of grease when and where it shatters. You're going to try and hit her with this thing so it goes all over her, right? Yep. Nice. Make a attack roll for me. Okay. I feel like that's athletics. Mm -hmm. No, it's, it's an attack because he's throwing it at her. But I do not get a modifier on this attack roll, right? Oh, no. I'll give you a modifier on it. I'll give you a... Relative to a javelin, how hard would you say it is to throw <laughs> would it a fit ball? a gas mask? I don't I'll know. Give, I'll give you the same advantage you have on a dart. So uh, I'll give you the plus seven on this. Okay. So just roll a dart one then? Yeah, exactly. Okay. 15 plus seven, 22. Shit. Ooh, I think that hits. Let me check. If that doesn't hit, I say we switch to one of the princesses and start venting her. <laughs> yeah. It does. It hits. It blasts all over her. And actually, since it's in a range, it actually gets mm -hmm. all over her daughter as well. Mm -hmm. Ooh, what's the range of that grenade? 1d20 plus 5 feet. Oh, and so the roll he just made counts for that too? Oh, yeah, because you'd have to roll well, to see how much it is. Well, it could be 6 feet, yeah. Yeah, let, yeah, roll a d20. <laughs> That's why I'm asking. Yeah, it could have been that this was too effective. Thank you for that. No, nope. <laughs> 19 plus yeah, 5, 19, 24. <laughs> yeah, 24 feet. Absolutely. So, yeah, you drenched both <laughs> girls. Good stuff. Wait, both girls, both princesses? <laughs> that got weird. Uh, no, uh, the queen, okay. <laughs> the yeah. queen and, and her, her and princess number two. Did he hit, does he at least hit the tits or does he get it all up in her face? <laughs> <and shit? laughs> Sorry, so I, nobody had done that yet. No, I said <laughs> we I, were like, all I like went to the line we were and I was like, no, it. pull back. <laughs> My question is, was she still turned away from it when it hit her? Did you say pull back? <laughs> <laughs> Did it mess with the princess though? Did it like wake her up out of her disability thing? Yeah, that definitely woke her up. Covering her in grease for sure. <laughs> God damn. Some people like grease. You never know. This is excellent work, Claw. I think you've set up some a good attack. I have a good I have a plan. So the queen waves her hands and a glowing blue ball about 10 feet around 
surrounds her and the princess who has not run away. Hmm. Shit. Weird that she would do that. <laughs> and then she moves towards you. So like really, really close towards you. Right up in your faces. Okay. Anything happen when that blue ball comes near us? Nope. It just, it, there's just like a weird glowing blue globe surrounding her and her daughter now. Kind of like a shield. And the other one ran away. First one ran away. This is the second one. She was just covered in grease. She's inside the bluing globe and she. All right. So, Eli, I, I know a, a pretty good deal about magic. Do I know the function of that blue glowing thing? Can I tell just from looking at it what it's function is? Is it healing them? Is it protecting them? That kind of thing. Roll a perception check for me for free. This won't be your action. 18. No, six. <laughs> six. I also, 18 though, I perceive. You know that globe is blue. Blue. Yeah. And <laughs> according to fantasy rules, and fantasy rules are fantasy rules, blue is good. So it's probably doing a good thing. To them. Okay, good. Good to know that. <laughs> it's as effective as my goddamn thunder away. <laughs> All right. Princess number two is up next. She has a short sword and she has run right up to Claw alongside her mother. She's the one who's not in the globe? No, she's in the globe. This is the one who is in the globe. Yes. Mm -hmm. She is going to attack Claw. Oh, max damage. Right. That's a 20. She criticaled? Yeah. Good for her. So happy for her. Good for her. <laughs> it's more fun when you get good rolls. Great. <laughs> she does 11 damage to you, Claw. Yep. And Quigley is up. Quigley, get rid of that blue globe thing. Quigley is not doing his usual thing. You know, usually he sort of dives in with you. But he seems sort of frozen and watching them. And he sort of frantically starts to move his hands in patterns that you, Snedrick, and you, Bridget, recognize as him trying to do some kind of magic. But you're not sure what kind of magic he's trying to do. And that is his turn. What was that, Quigley? He's too busy doing his magic. He doesn't respond. So he was like, magic, magic, and nothing <laughs> happened. Yeah, but Carl the Pocket Pocket Corn, Carl the Pocket Pocket Corn, Carl. <laughs> <laughs> a call back to the first episode. <laughs> All right, Bridget, you, you are up next. All right, I am going to try to inflict wounds upon... God, I guess I'm going to try to try to get in that bubble. Yeah, blow up that bubble if you can. At least we'll know for sure afterwards if it's healing or if it's a shield. I am going to cast it at a lower level because of that, just in case. Yeah, I'm going to do that. So spell attack. That's 23 to hit. Yeah. Does not hit. It rolls. What? Oh, you see your magic roll over. Yeah. It bounces off of that blue globe. And as a bonus action, <laughs> <laughs> has anybody been hit yet? I just got Claw hit. got hit. You did? Yep. Was it badly? No, I only lost 11. I have 38 max, so I'm at 27. Okay. What can you do as a bonus action? I can heal. I can cast. I can summon my spiritual weapon, but it's not a great weapon. The keg. Get the keg going. But it's not a great weapon. And, you could uh, drop it on the, the globe. That's true. And I can use it as a, as a bonus action as well. Then they'd be double flammable. <laughs> yeah. Beer or mead or whatever the fuck. It's, it's liquor of a very magical nature. Even more flammable. Do it. Keg. Um, keg. <laughs> keg. 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 <laughs> I am also pro keg, so yeah. I'm going to cast spiritual weapon. Anyway, I, I, I'll cast it. I can't use it yet, but I, I can use it as a bonus action for my next round, but I, I, I'll cast it. Fantastic. And I cast it at a third level, which means that I add another DA to it. Also, what type of weapon do you choose? Oh, it's my keg. <laughs> it's a fucking keg, and it can either do bonkin' damage or fucking light you on fire with, with fucking alcohol. And we can drink it. It's magical, awesome liquor. <laughs> That's a canon, I guess. It's not great to drink for anybody. <laughs> no. Anyway. Hi. So I'm going to summon my baller keg over the queen. And I'm just going to thunk her on the head with it. All right. The, the keg appears, but again, it's sort of thunks down and... This is melee damage. Uh, yeah, but it blasts off of the blue dome above her. 
cool, cool, cool. So we she can't take physical or magic damage, everybody. Yep. Well, I have to figure it out. You should start insulting her. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, you are up next. Okay. So blue feels like the opposite is red. If I do my fire breath weapon, maybe we'll see if we can get through that globe they got. At this point, anything. Try it all. All right. So I'm going to move back, first of all, and then like move pretty far away because the stuff I want to do has a pretty big range. So I move 15 feet and then I use the fire breath on the two that are in the dome. And they need to make a dexterity throw of 13 to dodge it. Otherwise, they take half damage, right? I mean, the fact that he's rolling probably means that it's going to Yeah, I was going to say, that, that suggests it got through the blue thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, the fire goes right through the blue dome. Like, there's there, nothing stops this. Mm. And also, they're covered in grease. Yep. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. And they are covered in grease. Oh, okay. You got the queen. <laughs> but you did not get the princess. So the princess, who obviously is like a swordsman, she's a lot more mobile than her mother is. She dives out of the way of a fire blast, but the queen takes this full in the face, like takes full damage in the face. Nice. So roll those 2d6 for me. Yes, nine. Four and a five. All right. And the princess takes half. Nine damage. All right, yeah. So the princess is going to take five. Did the princess dive far enough that she's outside of the blue dome now? Uh, Definitely, yeah. Oh, is the shield still there, but the fire went through it? Yeah, exactly. Okay, and is the grease now lit on fire, so they're getting fucked up, like, permanently? Yes, they're both on fire right now. <laughs> Excellent. All right, princess number one is going to continue to run towards the back of the room. Snedrick, you are up. All right. I will fucking Dave took all the glory out of the whole plan that me and Morgan had <laughs> set up, but I'm going to use Agonazor Scorcher, which is like Heath's only I, it does way more damage. <laughs> Who's Heath? All right. Yeah, right. Good call. Oh, so hey, e Eli, the, the queen's dexterity saving throw is going to be my other portent, my nine portent. So she's going to roll a nine. Nice. Good play. Okay. So the spell she did, the blue globe, that is a concentration spell. So she needs to make a constitution saving throw. To keep it going. To keep that spell going. Doesn't even matter. We just use fire and it fucking goes right through. Well, no, it matters. You don't it matter. It matters. <laughs> I don't have any fire spells. <laughs> I think I'm going to let it torch and beat him with it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> sure the fuck are. <laughs> yeah, she does not manage that concentration. So actually, when she catches fire, when you hit her with that flaming blast, Dave, the blue, I know I said it, it didn't, but the blue dome actually does flicker away when you hit her with that flame. So Snedrick, she's going to take the full brunt of your spell. And you said nice. her constitution saving throw is going to be a... Nine. Is going to be a nine, which is not going to do it. So go Woo! ahead and give her that damage. Excellent use of portent. <laughs> Thank you. 12. That's 4d8. Mm -hmm. So not great on 4d8, honestly. But That's not bad. No, no, not bad. You want, you want an 18 there. Better than her wussy-ass daughter did against uh, Claw. Mm. <laughs> Claw, you are up next. I think I'm just going to start beating on him just in, in yeah, regular, yeah, regular yeah, yeah, fashion. You can just regular old oh, beat Oh, yeah, him. beat him up. Yeah. Do the thing where you get like 20 hits in a row or whatever. Well, that was because of, of Snedrick, yeah. Well, she's also on fire, so... So hitting them with a the torch wouldn't, like, make more fire. <laughs> well, I feel like you should hit her with something, though. I mean, it's like punching her or getting your feathers all cinched might fuck you up, right? Do you think that if I punched her with my hands, it would hurt me? Nope. She's on fire. She's on fire. I feel like if I punch somebody who is on fire with my hands, it would hurt me. Right, but what if I'm so quick that, like, I just don't catch fire? Yeah, like Bruce Lee. Yeah. <laughs> Ip man. Do, we, do we think that would Ip work claw. or no? <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, I'll I'll add a dexterity saving throw to any punches you throw. <laughs> I, I'll take that. Your feathers are going to burn. Don't you have a weapon though? Like, couldn't you just use just a use like a fucking staff or whatever? No, I do. I have a weapon, but I wanted to use a key point to do two bonus unarmed strikes. I got gotcha. you. Yeah, you, yeah, do that. And I have a, I have a high dexterity, so you know I have a pretty good chance of passing. 
you have a really high shot of not being caught on fire. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, all right. that's that's all I could all you can really ask out of life. <laughs> I will heal the crap out of you. Bridget's got that keg. She can spray if you're on fire. <laughs> yeah, with alcohol. alcohol. That'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> Unless it's like Bacardi 151. <laughs> no, I've got Snillox snowballs. Oh, no, I don't because I used all my charges on that failed nothing. When you spray like beer on people, it doesn't light up like gasoline in a movie. No, anymore. but I think it's liquor. Most liquor won't do that either. Yeah, it's fair. magic liquor. As long as you have a high probability of not being further engulfed in flame by it, that's really all you can ask. Yeah, I mean, I have above 50%. <laughs> <laughs> all right, lock that in for me. What are you doing? I'm going to do two quarter staff strikes. And then a, a key point to do flurry of blows to do two unarmed strikes. Okay. And then you get an extra two unarmed strikes Great. because you're using a martial arts what? weapon. I feel like every time I try to do this, it's like, no, you have negative two. You hit yourself <laughs> in the face. <laughs> so you get two quarter staff strikes and are you using two key points or just the one? Just the one. Okay. So you got two quarter staff strikes and four punches. Okay. Do you want me to do the staff hits and then do the dexterity saving throw for the all the unarmed strikes at once or what? Uh, I want you to roll all four hits at once. Okay. So they're all plus seven. So just click that plus seven. First quarter staff is eight plus seven, 15. This is the queen, right? Yes, the queen. Second quarter staff is 13 plus seven. That's 20. First unarmed strike is two plus seven. That's nine. No. Second one is two plus seven. That's nine. No. <laughs> and the next one is a 20 plus seven. Whoa! 27. Yeah. Okay, so that's three hits. And then the last one is a four plus seven, 11. No. Okay. Okay, so that's three hits total. Roll that quarter staff damage for me. Six plus four, 10. And three plus four, seven. So 17. 17 and... Roll that critical hit when you're... Do what happens with the critical? Is it two dice or is it just... Two dice. Thing? Two dice. Two dice. Three plus four and five plus four. So 16. Uh, no, it's just one hit. You said two dice, right? Right, two dice. So it should have been... Oh, sorry, gotcha. So two it's, dice uh, plus four. But yeah. It would be 12. It would be that minus four. All right, so it's 12. Can you flick extra grease on them while you're doing all this too? <laughs> and make a... Dexterity saving throw for me. Oh, it was almost a 20, but it was a two plus seven. That's a nine. No. That's not almost 20. No, when the dice rolls, it like kind of hangs on the 20. And then, <laughs> and then it goes to a two. <laughs> I mean, it has half of the digits there. I thought maybe that's what you meant. <laughs> All right. Take 10 damage for me. Okay. And the queen is up going to take some damage from the fire. She doesn't seem to be in pain from any of this, but her body is definitely being destroyed by the fire. She sort of is caught up in the flame and squeezes her hand and says, daughter, to me. And you see a magical white light streak out of her hand backwards to the daughter who's running away. And it hits her in the middle of the back. And she turns around to face you with just like livid rage in her eyes. Oh, boy. Princess number two is up next. Claw, she is deeply, deeply unhappy <laughs> that you almost just attacked her mother. Almost what? Uh, that you almost killed her mother. Yeah. So, <laughs> I heard that too. She is going to attack you twice. Cool. With her short sword. Bob and weave, Claw. Bob and mm -hmm. weave. Yeah, I should have done that other key thing where I'm like super dodgy. That'll hit. How? 19. How do you? Yeah, it hits. <laughs> And a night, two 19s. Oh, I think he's knocked out now. That is going to do. Wow. Not good. That is going to really? do 18 damage. Oh. Really? Yep. Oh. Is that 16? Sure, it's not 16? No, it's 18. This All is why right. I don't do math out loud from now on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Quigley, when the Blue Dome exploded, Quigley stopped doing the spell. So. Quigley, who has been using this same sort of rusty, shitty short sword, when Quigley sees Claw fall, Quigley reaches behind him and sort of underneath his sort of like puffed up finery, he pulls out a long, thin, much more like dangerous looking blade and runs up to the princess. Have you had that the whole time, Quigley? <laughs> who has just downed Claw and attacks. And... 
does some damage. Excellent. All right. Bridget, you are up. Okay. I am going to... I'm going to shatter the queen. She's still on fire, right? She is still on fire, yes. Okay, damn. I was going to do a thing where I'd touch her, but I don't want to do that. Shatter the one off to the side. I've got a plan for the two that are next to each other. Okay, sure. Why not? I'll I'll uh, shatter the one who's by herself. You're following Dave's plan. I this is I think this is I good. Actually, it's this just is like surprising. a real good one. This is like a good one. I'm actually doing real D and D right now. I thought it's like, I'm not using a blunderbuss. I promise it's not the blunderbuss. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm down. I just I'm surprised that she was like, right. yeah, cool. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> I was kind of surprised too. <laughs> I think we were all surprised. <laughs> I think Bridget's also surprised. All right. Constitution saving throw. She's to hit a 14. She's to hit a 14. She does not. So that's 14 damage to her. Shattered her 14 face. 14 damage to her. Fantastic. I, and then as my bonus action, mm -hmm. I'm going to move the keg over to her. Or you could heal Claw. Can you heal Claw? No, I have to touch him first. Is he right next? He's not right next to me. He's like in front of the lady. I think you guys are next to each other. I got to wake him up first if he's under. Yeah, I can't. I can't heal him if he's passed out. Oh, OK. Your thing. Your bonus action doesn't fix that. No, it doesn't. But my bonus action, I'm going to. Sounds like she just doesn't want to help me. That's fine. I'm OK with it. <laughs> <laughs> Spiritual weapon. And there's an extra five. Well, you got to roll an attack roll, don't you? Do I? It doesn't automatically hit. You don't automatically hit. <laughs> about to say that's, <laughs> that's an unnatural 20. Okay, who is that to? That is to the one that I just attacked. Oh, the princess in the back. Yeah. Great. And how much damage did you do? Five damage. Five. Five damage. All yeah. right. Extra five. Blam. Excellent. Dave, you are up. Kegged. Kegged indeed. <laughs> I'm going fireball at the two that are near each other. And the way you can do it, there's a a 20-foot radius sphere centered on the point that I choose. So I'm going to make it so it hits the two of them, but not any of us who are lined up near them. All right. This is the first time you're casting Fireball, a very, very famous spell in Dungeons & Dragons. <laughs> also, Magic the Gathering, Channel Fireball, classic. <laughs> yep. So why don't you read that description for us? All right. Here it is. A bright streak flashes from my pointer finger to a point I choose within range and then blossoms with a low roar into an explosion of flame. Each creature in a 20-foot radius sphere centered on that point must make a dexterity saving throw. I believe they have to hit a 15 in this particular case. Cedric, what was the power on your Scorcher thingy? You were saying it was more powerful than my last thing? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it was. It was, <laughs> was it like 4, it was 4d8? It was 5d8. Was it? Yeah. Either way, 8d6 is bigger than that. So a target takes 8d6 <laughs> fire damage on a failed save or half as much damage on a successful one. Oh, so you the, used your weaker spell earlier. The fire oh, get around around measure. Measure. Let's go ahead I, and measure I didn't now. use a spell. I used an action. I saved a slot so I could do this again if we Everybody, needed. get your dicks out. And, and yeah, I no, no, out you, you always want to use the biggest gun last. That's you know, it's so like, like you always say. Exactly correct. We're going to... I guarantee you we don't die in this encounter. <laughs> <laughs> So the fire spreads around corners. It ignites flammable objects like grease, for example, or someone covered in grease in the area that are not being worn or carried. The objects, if they're not being worn or carried, they would ignite. At higher levels, when you cast a spell using a spell slot of, I don't have that, never mind, because the numbers are bullshit. <laughs> All right, you watch the queen wave her hands the way she did when she dispelled Snedric's spell. And let's see how it goes. So the DC equals 10 plus, what's the spell's level? Three, third level spell. Okay, so she's got to hit a 13 to make this bad boy go away. Bridget rolled a 20 for some reason. I rolled a 20? Oh, Bridget did? Fuck yeah. <laughs> but that, that does what nothing. What is I doing? She waves her hand. Your little flame streaks out, but she waves her hand. And once again, that flame is extinguished and nothing happens. You could tell because he said your little flame streaks out. Like, <laughs> right. Was, like, very dismissive. <laughs> if it was a majestic, girthy flame. <laughs> so tell me again how much more damage that did than my thing. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, it's more. drastically more powerful. I like that D and D has become competitive no matter what we play. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was four D eight by the way. I was thinking of my it was four D eight face. I was, I was thinking of my thunder wave. <laughs> no, I was thinking of my one that got completely dismissed, a la yours just now. All right. So the daughter at the back is going to run up 
and she's going to come for you, Bridget. She views you as the next biggest attack. She's going to attack you twice. She's not wrong. With her long sword. I am the next big thing. Oh, yeah. That'll crit. Fun. And a 17. That hits. Okay. My God. So she is going to do 20 damage to you. Oh. Ooh, and she's going to take Wrath of Storm. Yeah, she is. Oh, yeah. Uh, the creature takes 2d8 lightning or thunder damage. Your choice. Roll that damage for me. Okay. 2d8? Yeah. All right. She's going to take seven damage. <laughs> All right. Seven damage. And I'm going to take 20 damage. So that was a great exchange. Love that for me. She does two other things now that she's in your presence. The first is she sort of tenses and you watch some of the like wounds on her body from the various things you've done to her close up. Fuck. But the other thing she does is she pulls a shield from her back and holds it in front of her mother and her sister. All right, Snedrick, you are up. All right. I have remarkably little in the way of attack stuff at this point. You could do that less powerful fireball that she didn't try to counter because it was less powerful. You could try that one. Yeah, yeah, I could do that again. It's kind of boring to do the same spell again, you know? It's good that they're covered in grease, fire stuff. Yeah, I mean, we haven't, like, they've been on fire. You know? Yeah, they yeah, are, are on they fire. More fire damage? You could always yeah, describe could. it differently. They take fire damage every time they have a turn. That's true, I could. Do fire spells get doubled at all or no? No. All right, so... I'm getting the impression that the daughters aren't super smart, that mom's doing most of the thinking. So I'm going to cast hideous laughter on the daughter with the shield. Ooh. She has to make an intelligent saving throw. And if she misses, she becomes incapacitated and unable to stand up because she thinks everything that she sees is really fucking funny. That is true. That's, it's <laughs> excellent. That's excellent. That's so good. It's a wisdom saving throw and she has to hit 14, right? Yes. All righty. Let's see here. She does make it. So, yeah, your uh, spell. What was oh, the, that's man. the third. I've been so excited Ooh. for this spell to actually land. Yeah, <laughs> right, right. No, it's always failed. It is always failed. It's the opposite of our real life. <laughs> <laughs> We're good at jokes in real life. You can just lie. We don't even see your rolls. No. Must be fair. They must be able to trust me. I don't try. I don't fucking trust you. My shit always fails. <laughs> I know you're lying about other stuff already. Just lie about the stuff that's helpful. I feel like I don't need to trust you. Just saying. I need my goddamn hideous <laughs> laughter to work more than I need to trust you. That's what it is. That's the most important. <laughs> Thank you. All right, Kala, make a death saving throw. Yep, a death saving throw. Yep, not good. Six. Okay, that is one strike against you. Two more, and Claw is no more. Okay. All right. The queen is up next. Are you there, Eli? Don't do this. Oh, yeah. Eli. No, I'm here. Sorry. I'm just trying to think of what she does. You know you're in charge of the queen. I am yeah. in charge of the queen. She's got a lot of cool shit. It's been a long time. Go on. Do you not randomize her actions? Doesn't she get like, her? Uh, you'd roll a dice for what she does or no? No, of course not. No. Because then she would just be like, I had to take thoughts. <laughs> Sam. We'd have a better chance that way. <laughs> All right. She is going to blast out a lightning bolt at definitely Bridget and Dave. I've stepped away from everybody. No, so you fucking haven't. No, you haven't. Yes, I said earlier that I stepped away. Yeah, he did when he did the fire. Yeah, actually, did when he did the yeah, I actually thing. did do that. Did you step a hundred feet away? Yep. I um, stepped 15 feet away, which is not next to Bridget. She moves so that she can catch you in this <laughs> line. <laughs> hey, look who can play Dungeons and Dragons the way you can. She gets out her fucking protractor. Wait, one second. She's asking me to describe the entire things of the room. Okay, now she wants to know what kind of ceilings there are. Yeah, no, describe all the describe all the geometry in the room. Well, now she wants to know where the carpet was bought. <laughs> She needs an item number. Okay. Are those Corinthian pillars? She's going to move to catch. Did you haggle? <laughs> Dave and Bridget in this blast of lightning. 
This is a dex save. Oh, boy. Will you describe the lightning, the spell? <laughs> describe the lightning? Yeah, the, describe the spell. How many electrons, approximately? <laughs> no, describe. just describe the about? parameters a, of that spell. Unnatural 20. A stroke of lightning. Nice. Forms a line 100 feet long and five feet wide. Blasts out from yeah, you. Yeah, we're, we're more than five feet apart in no matter, There's it, That would not No, she, she protracted her. She, she protracted, yeah. She was a sympathy. There, there has to be some way, or there, there would have to be a line where, like, one of you is behind the other. We're both in the room. <laughs> we are both in the room. Yeah, she got out a protractor, and she found the exact <laughs> right angle to blast both of you. I feel like that's hitting her daughter. No, not hitting her daughter. It hits the both of you, but not her daughter. Make a dexterity saving throw for me. Bridget, you already rolled a 20. I did. What is the queen's speed? <laughs> Why? That's for Why? me. I know that. You don't know that. Because, I mean, that would determine how much she can move. So there's not necessarily always a way she could get both of us in the same line. I know her speed. She's got good speed. She's a speedy lady. <laughs> I think you lost. <laughs> Roll a dexterity saving throw. Yeah. Keith. Me? Yeah. yeah. All right. We're just, we're, we're allowing this to happen. We're just going to let the, <laughs> you, all this yeah, lying yeah, happen. We're allowing D&D &D to happen. Yes. This level of geometry. Nat 20 face. <laughs> <laughs> I love the idea of they like, just doing democracy D and D. No, there is not a fucking skeleton in the room. Democracy and debate. <laughs> what is a skeleton? Who bolts a There's no yeah, well, I dexterated. I dexterated the shit out of that lightning bolt, so I'm fine. So, what do you take? Half damage? Yeah, you both take half damage. Which is, I feel like a nat twenty means zero. Mm, not always. All right, so how, I second Heath's motion. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 28 damage. Is half damage? Is half. Oh, no, that's full damage. So 14 damage. Wow. That's a fucking lot better. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that is that is better. 14 damage. And she takes a little bit more damage. Most of her body has burned away at this point, like her lower half of her body. Okay, somebody kill the fucking queen next time. I would, but every time I do, like her thing, sure. my thing yeah. bounces off of her. Now that makes sense. I'm dead. Yeah, well, you're and not Klaus dead. Got an even better excuse. <laughs> <laughs> my skills are just dead. He's all <laughs> all the way. All right, princess number two oh, is gonna run over and attack Snedrick. Mm -hmm. Is she engaged with you already, Bridget? Uh, yeah, because yeah, they're all together. Yeah, she's going to attack you then. Now she's going to attack me. Fun. All right. Well, now I feel bad for saying yes so quickly. <laughs> I, I didn't realize. I thought that meant you would get an attack of opportunity. <laughs> she's going to attack you twice with her short sword. Uh, uh, uh. A 20? <laughs> yeah, that hit. Miss. Miss. <laughs> and a 25. Both Oof. of those hit. Those both hit. And she is going to do... 13 damage. Oh, 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 dear. Are you below 20 yet or no? I am below 20. All right. Quigley is up. Quigley is going to attack one of the sisters again. And so the shield sister, like she is in front, but he managed to get through with one slice of this like very dangerous looking sword. And he does some damage to the sister that just attacked Bridget. All right, Bridget, you are up. Okay. Just to remind you of the landscape here, the queen is no longer being protected by her daughter. The two daughters are together, one of which is holding a shield. The other one is holding a sword. They're sort of together, grouped together. Quigley is attacking them. And they are near me. And they're both near you, yeah. Okay, I'm going to inflict wounds on the one that doesn't have a shield. Okay, do it. That's... 17 to hit. I don't know why it's not showing the things. I saw. I rolled in a little, yeah. Yeah, that'll hit. Excellent. All right. 26. 26. 26. 26 damage. All right, there yeah. we go. And then as my bonus action, I'm going to go hit the queen with my keg. Nice. Nice. Roll that damage for me. Or roll that attack roll, sorry. That's a nine plus six. Or sorry, that's a six plus six, 12. That will just hit. Thank God. One damage. Nice. <laughs> oh, sorry. One plus three. So four damage. All right. Little bit of little drop of beer <laughs> falls out onto the queen. Oh, no, no, no. It taps her on the head. Yeah. Just a bonk. Tap. 
<laughs> Classic. There's sort of an awkward pause while the queen, they're <laughs> raging with magic, still on fire, floating <laughs> half of her, is just like, okay, I guess that was also part of things. We just have to keep that in mind. <laughs> I like to think that it got like the bridge of her nose. You're like, oh, fuck. That's not yeah. Or she's wearing the, the the crown, so it probably pushed down really oh, hard. Oh, sure, on sure, her sure, yeah. Got, got a little bit ears. of her hair stuck in it. Oh, yeah. I got my edge. Ow. <laughs> All right. Dave, you are up. Fireball at the two that are next to each other. Nice. All righty. She's going to try and stop this one, too. Okay, she needs to hit a 13. Yeah, and she does manage to extinguish that flame again. Jesus. But you can tell that her magic is weak. Like, she does this with truly the last of her magical ability. You see her sort of squelch this flame. What a weird thing that you could see that. It's she so doesn't odd. just squelch it. She sort of, like, takes it into her body, and you watch her take a little damage from it. All right. The shield princess is up next. She is going to go... For Dave. Oh, no, she's engaged with you, too. Right, Bridget? She can go for Dave. <laughs> Back of opportunity. She can go for Dave. And I can I can live to fight another day. Attack her with a healing spell on myself. How about that? <laughs> no, you're right in front of her. She's going to attack. Shit. I'm going to. This is buckets for me. Buckets of beer. She's going to miss first one. Oh, thank God. You're welcome. Thank goodness. Thank Eli. Does a 17 hit? It just hits. Okay. She's doing six damage to you. I'm uh, passed out. All right. She knocks you down. Snedrick, you are up. All right. I'm going to heal Bridget. I don't. I don't have a. Can you? I don't have a spell for that anyway. It doesn't matter. <laughs> um, no worries. Kill that queen. <laughs> yeah, kill the queen. All right. All right. Yeah. The jukebox. So, okay, I'm going to use this damn spell one way or the other, I guess. It seems so weird for me to use it because it regains health for me that I can't give to anybody else and I haven't taken a hit. Oh, do it. So I'm going to use Vampiric Touch on the Queen. The touch of my shadow wreath hand can siphon life force from others to heal my wounds. Make a melee spell attack against a creature within your reach on a hit. The target takes 3d6 of damage, necrotic damage. And you regain hit points equal to half the amount of necrotic damage dealt. Until the spell ends, you can make the attack again on each of your turns as an action. That's so Ooh. fucking cool. If you stick out your foot and touch Bridget, it might give her life back. <laughs> well, wait, 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 wait. Is she undead? Will necrotic damage do nothing? I've got people with necrotic damage in this fight yeah. already. Okay. Oh, you already did? Yeah, I did. Nice. So I'm going to do that. Yeah, roll that plus six for me. <laughs> it's a 13. I think that's going to hit, actually. Yeah, that will hit her. Yes. Roll that damage. All right. The damage will be five, and I'll regain three that I already have. <laughs> She's so Excellent. close to dead. That's <laughs> the dead should do it. A, a, even more of her body blows away. She's just like fucking three little bone nodes in a, in a jaw. Claw. Hit the queen. Claw, just say something mean to the queen to start. Claw's passed out. Claw, this is your second death saving throw and I again I want to be very clear if you and you succeed all right one failure right. one success <laughs> you just let me build the tension next time <laughs> instead of just like fucking just throwing the dice on them <laughs> <laughs> trying to make a podcast here the middle of the teaser in a time and, okay you lived you lived great the queen yeah she takes more fire so yeah that damage that Snedrick did, it sort of staggers her back and the fire, she just sort of sags where she is and burns a little bit. She's she's not exactly dead, but she's not able to do anything at this point. I loosened the, the, the lid. <laughs> <laughs> the daughter has seen what you did, Snedrick, and so she's going to attack you now that Bridget is down. She's going to attack you twice with her short sword. That's uh, a 25. Oh, that misses. She does not. I'm so bad ass. Yeah, that hits. And a nine. That does not. Okay, so let's roll this damage here. She's going to do four damage. Oh, well, she sucks, doesn't she? Yeah, she's real hurt. Real hurt. Y'all did a bunch of magic at him. All right, Bridget, 
It is time for your very first death Death save. How do I do this? Should be an option to do it when you are out of hit points. But if there's not, you can just roll a d20. I feel like I'm the only person who's made death saves so far. I did once. Oh, you did? Okay. Yeah, I mean, I feel like I'm constantly doing it. (laughs) Yeah, you've done it more than me. (laughs) 18. Yeah, that's a success. Nice. Great job not being dead. (laughs) I forgot quickly, but luckily it did not affect anything because you just were not dead. (laughs) Nothing happened. So he's going to go after his sister again and he's going to finish her off. He he runs sort of over everybody, the sleeping body, the knocked out body of Bridget. And now that the shield sister is sort of taken aback, he's going to do another attack and he's going to cut princess number two, the one with the short sword in half. Ooh. Got some issues to work out there. Yeah. All that attitude from earlier is making sense now. (laughs) All right. Dave, you are up next. I would like to summon Carl the Pug Pegacorn. (laughs) A glorious Carl the Pug of Pegacorn appears at your side. Hey, what up? Wait, what what am I doing? Hey, how's it going? Awesome. Yeah. Good to see you. Wow. uh, It is on fire in here. Yeah. Yeah. There is a lot of fire. A lot of fire. It's grease and fire just everywhere. Wow. I basically killed that one in the middle, Carl. Yeah. So you know. No. So the guy who's passed out is talking somehow, but he's... I'm not passed he's not, out. He's not, not passed oh, out. He, he, he's talking normal. The guy's talking normal. <laughs> I'm speaking Falcon, though. I speak it fluently. Now. <laughs> will you, will you uh, Carl, go ahead and um, finish off that last one for us? Just, uh, you know, with like a... Stab of the the horn, maybe. <laughs> okay, so the, the princess got cut. In, there's the lady over there. She's been cut in half. I feel like she's taken care of. Yeah, she's good. The queen over there, she looks pretty fucked up. She's done. Yeah, yeah the other she looks one. pretty good. You're talking about the one with the shield. The one that's left. All yeah, right. the one that who's like seems like still a problem. Plan of action or just like full pug foo? Pug foo, <laughs> obviously. All right, ah. pug foo. Yeah! And Carl goes like, he pulls his little leggy leg out in like a flying <laughs> scissor kick motion <laughs> and kicks the princess right in the face. It's like Carl uh, Lukang for two damage because he's a pug. <laughs> All right. The princess is up. She, of course, has just been attacked by Carl yeah. and she is going to counterattack him. Because he's right in front of her. You are so getting turned into a falcon. (laughs) She slices Carl cleanly in half and he says, yeah, no, that tracks. That tracks. (laughs) Dave. Yeah. Please roll a D10,000 for me. A D10,000? Why are you surprised when he says this now? <laughs> we've d- we've been down this road. This is Falcon Road. You could you could have actually done damage to her with a fucking cantrip, but you decided to or a blunderbuss even. I wanted Carl to have the glory. You used a spell slot <laughs> and to here get we are Carl here. In Falcon Road again. All right. 3469 3,469. I'm so ready. I'm so ready. It's the sex number. My I like body it. is ready. 3,469. God, this is, there's so many options. If you turn into another bird of just like a different type. I'm guessing 10,000. <laughs> <laughs> what if like 3,000 through 3,470 is just birds? Pigeon. <laughs> One of the caster's feet refuses to come anywhere near the other. <laughs> so wait which one refuses to be near the other you know what I'm gonna let you choose Dave and how <laughs> define near <laughs> I cut one of my feet off the one that won't go near the other you'll have to do that on your next turn alright wait so what am I what is the angry foot doing right you're, now if you're to doing like, the fucking split I'm doing a split yeah you're doing a split you are doing a split <laughs> An involuntary split. It doesn't say that you have any flexibility well, or extra well, flexibility. Well, but the other foot, the other foot I control. So each time right, the, the, the just, angry foot moves away, I move that foot closer to it. It's just yeah. hopping sideways. Now. Yeah, I'm moving sideways or in circles or whatever. You're doing Van Damme splits in a circle, right? Where you slide into it and then jump and slide into it and jump up. I'm doing a sweet dance, everybody, just for the record. Sweet, sweet dance. All right, Snedrick, you are up. 
All right, so we've just got the one chick left over, right? That is right. All right, I have used that spell slot, and I didn't. Oh, I have much. Of, all right, I'll do fucking agonizer scorcher again, yeah. but at the second yeah. level. Oh, I mean, I'm just saying, dramatically speaking, you using this spell to end the fight is great, pretty excellent. All right, so she needs to make a saving throw, dexterity saving throw. Okay, dexterity saving throw. Luckily, this is not the particularly dexterous sister. <laughs> it's a really clumsy sister that you have left. <laughs> that's a seven. That's not going to save. All right. And she takes three D8 fire damage and shit. That's going to be 14. 14 damage. Yes. Baller. That will do it. Yeah. Oh, my. That literally exactly does it. Fuck yeah. yes. <laughs> I just barely saved the day. <laughs> do you have anything uh, anything you want to rub in anyone's face as you cast that spell? I'm just saying. I mean, it did do more, ultimately more damage. I'm just saying. Snedrick's a petty Sorry, bitch. Just... I can't imagine him not saying anything. <laughs> <laughs> that princess is blasted away. So the princesses are blasted away. The queen sags to the ground and surprisingly quickly, Quigley catches her. And lowers her gently. And as he does, she pulls at his courtier's hat that he's been wearing the entire time he's been with you. And from underneath it, long brown hair spills out, reaching to his shoulders and framing his face. And the queen says, there she is, my beautiful girl. I am so glad you came back, darling. And with that, she blows away to dust. Quigley stands up and, without speaking to you, just walks through the tapestry at the back of the room. Okay. I always, would that feel rude to y'all? I felt like that was kind of rude. <laughs> I feel like he would have explained what was happening to us a little bit as, before he walked attitude, away. attitude, Quigley. Yep, I uh, agree. Oh, no, 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 Claw. We are passed out. I wish you were a falcon. Okay, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna pull out the ma the fantasy um pads to to start your heart back up. <laughs> the defibrillator, defibrillators, Phoenix that's it. Downs. <laughs> I'm gonna take out my fantasy defibrillators, and I'm gonna heal them. No, I'm gonna go. To, we're gonna go through the tapestry with Quigley. All right, Dave and Snedrick, going through the tapestry. You pass through the tapestry that leads to the tomb's inner sanctum, which is all things considered a rather small and unimpressive chamber. A human figure sits on the floor at its center with its back to you, and in front of it, an illusion plays. Snedrick, you recognize this as the message spell. And in it, an impressive, bearded, crowned king speaks into the darkness. Salta, my boy! I wish we had more time. I wish I had the time to teach you about the power I leave you, how to wield it, how to rule, but... I was too busy being your father to teach you to be king. Your mother and your sisters, they traveled the world learning to be queens and rulers, but you and I never seemed to get around to your lessons. We just sat together and you insisted on hearing stories. Perhaps that was the only way I could think of to teach you. I think we got you a dueling lesson once or twice, but otherwise, it was just us. And then the message spell starts again, playing over and over in the darkness. The figure does not turn to you, but says, you're stronger than Reese and the cannonball, more clever than all my traps and guards, even stronger than my mother and sisters. Are you here to kill me and break the spell? Because if you are, I won't try to stop you. After more than a hundred years, I suppose I deserve it, but do they hate me? And Quigley, who's sort of standing next to you on the other side of the tapestry, they've sort of just come in the room, says, who? And the figure that's hunched at the center says, my subjects, my prisoners, do they hate me for doing this to them? <laughs> they must. Sometimes I swear I can hear them wailing, throwing themselves against the wall of this place, trying to be free. They, they must be miserable. I just, I wasn't ready for father to die. Nobody was. He had almost no advisors, no inner counsel. He was 
the undying king of Sararak. Nobody ever expected him to die, let alone so unexpectedly. And then <laughs> they were left with me, the only son. The boy who would rather focus on war stories and poems than lessons. And why shouldn't I? My father's magic had kept him alive and strong for a thousand years. He had faced down dragons and demon kings. Nothing could kill him. Until it did. And then I was the wielder of the loot. One of the most powerful magical objects in the world. I didn't know how to wield it, so I did the only thing I could think to do with its power. I tried to bring him back, but death is not easily reversed even with small lives. And my father did not live a small life. I tried and I tried and I failed and I failed. And when I failed for what felt like the thousandth time, I got desperate. I bound my life force to the heartstring, the blood of a magician king. And I wished, I wished for my father to be back. But more than that, I wished that nobody, nobody in this city would ever have to feel the way I felt ever again. And feels like I didn't get either wish. And Quigley says, no, you didn't. And you'd almost forgotten. He's there, but he's staring intensely at the back of the creature on the floor. And at the sound of his voice, the prince turns. He is terrible. You can tell the soft young man he once was has been mummified and hardened by darkness and pain into a lich. He looks like stone if stone could rot. And he says, Quigs, is that you? Quigley moves to the lich and holds him and says, you locked yourself away and cast your spell because I abandoned you when you needed me. And while everyone in this city has spent more than a hundred years sick to death of each other, Salta, I have spent the entire time trying to get back to you. I have died 10,000 times trying to reach you, brother. You can rest now. I'll take things from here. And for the first time in a hundred years, the prince smiles and then turns to dust, leaving Quigley's arms empty, except for an old wooden lute with only one string that shines with a magical golden light. Quigley turns to you and brusquely says, My father, um, King Asararak, lived and ruled for thousands of years without marrying once or siring a child. And then when he did marry, he didn't have one. He had two children, twins, a boy and a girl. The world could never know, of course. Men and women can both inherit titles in cloth, and my parents feared that the kingdom would be torn apart. So the court was told that I was a child of my mother's sister who had died when I was born. I was taught to rule, to fight, to lead as a princess, but I was forbidden by my father to do magic or to touch his loot. And for many years, I thought it was because I was a girl. My father was just old-fashioned, but I am a Sararak's daughter, and magic called to me. I created the identity of Quigley with my mother's help, who introduced me as a distant cousin. And while my father fawned on my distractible brother Salta and tried to teach him all he knew, I studied at his side and grew stronger and more powerful than anybody knew. My father was a powerful wizard, but he had no eye for people, even when it meant his daughter was at his elbow. See, it wasn't up to my father to choose an heir. Funnily enough, his magic loot did the job for him. Quigley turns to you and says, I have spent a hundred years trying to get back to the throne I ran away from. I cannot save my brother or father, but... I can help everyone else. And then she begins to play the lute in her lap. The music washes out over you and the city. Everywhere in Clough, people stop what they're doing and listen to an instrument they haven't heard for hundreds of years, playing its song that it's never played before. The song moves further and further out over the city, transforming it, changing the Obsessor's Traction Park and the Fuckhole back into houses, merchant halls, and fairgrounds. 
out over the last stop inn and the Fool's Guild and everyone in it, out to the very edge of the city, to Stansky and his booth, to the bubble itself, and as if popped with a pin, it bursts. And in that moment, the Queen of Clough gives her city and her people a gift they've been longing for for a long, long time. Peace. And as the sun sets over Clough, its people wake up, remembering nothing. Not the bubble or the tomb, not the undead guardians or their years of desperation and despair. To them, it is the evening after the death of their king, the day after the prince died trying to bring him back, and the somber coronation of the new queen. The door to the inner chamber opens, and there stand the queen and the princesses, no longer undead or with the damage you did to them, but very much alive. They eye you with careful suspicion, as does the, well, familiarly cannonball-shaped guard who walks in with them. The queen says, Darling, who are these people? And before you can reply, Quigley says, Just some friends, mother. They were just leaving. And with that, she presses a glowing string into your hand. You leave the castle through untrapped halls, past a giant at the gate who looks vaguely familiar, although he has skin this time, by an inn that pays you no mind and doesn't welcome you, and out past a bored guard at the city gate, reading a newspaper on your way home. 